Hi, this is Joe and welcome back to the shop. Um, I had to take my spindle out of the mill and disassemble it. Um, this is a, a brown and sharp number 10 uh, collet taper and uh, it was in the mill probably over 20 years and I tried everything, heating it, cooling it, uh, pounding on it and I didn't want to pound too hard because I don't want to damage the bearing so just could not get it out so I had to disassemble uh, the spindle and uh, put the uh, the spindle shaft here in my press and uh, heat it up with a propane torch and finally got it out it, it came out with a huge bang so it again was in way way too hard um, there's uh, various uh, reasons why that is but uh, the Gorton 9J mill uh, is known for uh, having a difficult time of getting the spindle tapers out. So that's out. Uh, I didn't film the disassembly because there was way too much cussing going on. Uh, it wasn't difficult but uh, was very greasy and uh, I had to do a lot of work on the press. Uh, let me show you the the bar here. Here's a threaded rod and uh, Without heat, I bent the threaded rod really well, so I had to go get the propane torch and really heat it up. So we're going to uh, assemble uh, the spindle back today. Um, these are uh, axial tapered bearings, and just to let you know, they're ball bearings, and they're lubricated by uh, a light machine oil uh, that drips down from uh, above the spindle from a little... Uh, reservoir and when you're putting these back together the uh, there's an open end on one side where the taper is and these two tapers have to be put face to face uh, notice I have some paint marks on here if you can see that one is outside one is inside and same thing on the other end this is uh, the top of the spindle the other bearings are the bottom of the spindle so the open side is facing out the two uh, bearings with the lip are facing together. So we're going to assemble this back together. Uh, I will show some of it on camera, some of it I won't because I'm probably going to have to do some tapping. And then we'll get the uh, spindle back together. Uh, I don't have a surface plate, so the flattest, flattest surface that I have is my mill table. I ran a dial indicator along it, along it the other day and I'm getting uh, less than a half thou run out so I will put it on V blocks on the uh, mill table and then we'll run a dial indicator on there and any adjustments that have to be made we'll make it and I'll try to include a, some of that footage uh, in the video so I'm gonna start assembling now I'll show you the progress as I as I move along I've pounded the two um, bearings on again face to face and uh, basically what I used was a, uh, a brass drift punch and a ball peen hammer and gently gent gently tap these two bearings onto the shaft and then there's a spacer that uh, that goes on and we'll tap that down on here and then we'll put the uh, put the then there's a large uh, the large portion of the spindle uh, we'll put this on and then we'll put the uh, upper bearings there's a sleeve inside and the bearings sit in here and then there is a a nut and a castellated washer that we'll put on um, let's go ahead and try to do that now let me back the camera up a little bit so you can see what's going on Okay, the sleeve just slid on quite nicely. So now what we'll do is we'll mount the uh, uh, the spindle sleeve around the shaft and then we'll uh, put the upper bearings in place. Before I took the spindle out, I marked the spindle with a, a yellow uh, paint marker. And that way I know when I put it back together that I can align the spindle properly back into the mill head. So also, let's go over here. There is also a paint marker 
on the outer portion of the spindle sleeve that I marked and we'll then put that back properly. Let's do the upper bearings now. Again the open side is going to go down then that way we can do face to face on the bearings like that. We have an inner and we have an outer. trying to keep my hands out of the way so you can see what's going on okay the inner bearing is now sealed and I put just a tiny bit of grease on the shaft to allow it to uh, slip on easily the bearings are primarily lubricated by a light oil so I'm just putting that on the inside of the shaft and let's make sure that we have face to face on the bearings and we do so now we're going to put the upper bearing in Okay, we have the upper bearings in. Let's wipe the excess grease off. Okay, the only thing we have left now is the uh, castellated uh, washer and the nut. And I just usually uh, put these on and lightly tighten them in place. And then before we lock down the tabs, I'm going to put the dial indicator uh, on and we'll measure the run out on the uh, spindle. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to tighten this down and then let's, uh, we'll get some V blocks and one, two, three blocks and we'll put this uh, spindle on the uh, mill table and we'll uh, check the run out. My V blocks aren't big enough, unfortunately. I gotta pick up some larger ones. I used to have a small mini lay or mini mill, but now I have the big one. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mount it in the uh, in the mill head, and then uh, after it's in, we'll do a run out test. And oh well, if it's slightly off, we'll just have to pull it back out and adjust it. But uh, I'm hoping it will be fine. Here's the uh, line on the uh, spindle nose, or the spindle, and the line on the pulley. And I loosened this up a teeny bit so I could uh, adjust this back and forth so the spline will line up. So that's coming in nicely. And the uh, the gib or uh, the quill handle just engaged. So now we can uh, take it up a bit more, and then we can. Uh, put the spring and the base plate in. Let's uh, do a run out test here. Okay, looks like we have just under 2,000, so now I'm going to, uh, to do a little adjusting. 
according to the manual and we'll see if we can bring that uh, down a little smaller on the run out. Okay, I made an adjustment up top. I'll show you that adjustment here in a minute. Okay, looks like just a tad over one. So I'm going to leave that there for now. I might come back and do a little adjusting later. Let me show you the adjustment on the top that I did. There's uh, two set screws right here that push on spring-loaded pins right here. So um, you find the low spot on the spindle and then you move the collar to the opposite side and then you tighten these little set screws that push on the pins. And uh, that's how I went from two thousandths to just a tad over one. Uh, I'm going to play around with this later, but I'm a little tired right now. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for future videos.